As far back as I can remember, I've always loved Martin Scorsese movies. Okay, let's get down to it, shall we? Is Goodfellas the very best film of the 1990s? Well, in a competition between it and Joel and Ethan Coen's gangster movie, Miller's Crossing, I'd say Goodfellas has the edge because it's based on a true story and has more innovative editing. Is Goodfellas the very best movie that Martin Scorsese has ever made? Well, I think so, yes. As a matter of fact, it is. Is Goodfellas the very best movie that I have ever seen in my entire life? Hmm, yes. Yes, as a matter of fact, it is. Good. Now that that's all settled, go watch V. Rose Be Happy's review. Take it easy. What, that's it? You're be kidding me. That's the whole thing? <laughs> Great one, man. Good. Hilarious. You're a funny guy. I'm funny how? I've been waiting so long, Dini. I've been waiting so long, Dini. I've been okay. Fine. You want to review? You got one. Good fellows came out in fall of 1990. I had turned 17 that year. I had just started my senior year in high school. My friends and I had all seen Raging Bull and Taxi Driver uh, and The Color of Money, and uh, we were excited to see another Scorsese movie, especially one about gangsters. Man, we had no idea what we were in for. I mean, this thing just blew us away. So funny, so exciting, so scary, and just dazzling every single minute. I can't think of another movie that minute for minute is, is as entertaining as Goodfellas is. For example, you have a good day at school? Learned a lot, huh? You want to tell me what this is? It's a letter from school. It says you haven't been there in months. In months! It was right around this time that I realized I was watching something pretty special. I'd never seen a movie edited like this before with a, that freeze frame right in the middle of a guy throwing a punch and a whole bunch of narration and then boom, it starts up again as soon as the narration is over. Never seen any movie done like this before. That's what made it so exciting. The script for Goodfellas was adapted from a, a nonfiction book called Wise Guy, which is about uh, Henry Hill and his wife Karen, uh, who are a married couple heavily involved in organized crime in the 1970s and 80s in New York City. Um, they Henry basically worked uh, with his friends under a gangster named Paul who sort of ran a local neighborhood. Um, and uh, what's great about Goodfellas is uh, the fact that up until this point, there's usually just one narrator per movie, but Goodfellas is narrated from both Henry's and Karen's perspective. Now, a couple of movies have used this since then. For example, Casino, also by Scorsese, also adapted from a nonfiction book uh, that takes place in Las Vegas. Um, it has also two narrators, in this case, Robert De Niro and Joe Pesci, and uh, there's another guy that makes sort of a guest appearance. Um, <laughs> but Casino is more like a, a bigger, longer, slower, not quite as slick uh, cousin to Goodfellas. Um, the only other film that I can think of offhand that uses techniques like this is Election. Not only do they have multiple narrators, four narrators in Election, um, but they also have uh, you know, some of the same sort of freeze frame and, and, and various little cinematic tricks for fun. Talking directly to camera, that's used as well. Um, Scorsese doesn't rely so much on really dramatic camera moves as he does the editing. Uh, and the way he stages scenes is, is, is really just amazing, just fantastic. Uh, as the movie goes on, you get a really, really, really strong picture of how life is in this particular environment, dealing with these guys, living with these guys, year after year after year. Uh, as Karen says at one point in the movie, it just sort of became normal living like this, you know? And um, Henry, of course, his attitude is, and a lot of the, the attitude of a lot of the guys around him is, is that anyone who would work a nine to five job to collect a paycheck and pay taxes and all that kind of stuff is a sucker. And they didn't want to live that way. And they would do anything not to. From now on, any letter from that school comes directly here. You got that? Another letter from that school goes to that kid's house. Another thing I like about this movie is even though it's a serious film, based on a true story about people who are thieves and killers and all kinds of badness, it's one of the funniest movies I've ever seen in my life. 
I mean, it's hilarious. The third time I saw this in the theater, people were laughing at even at the shot of the wedding cake. You know, I don't know why. Because they know where the money came from to pay for the wedding cake. <sighs> There's no question that the most exciting, most memorable character in this movie is the one played by uh, uh, Joe Pesci. Uh, and that's Tommy DeVito. Tommy DeVito, of course, was a real person like all the other characters. Uh, and one thing that they didn't actually depict in the movie is that he had a brother and that he killed him at one point. This is something that Henry Hill uh, talked about in an interview he gave uh, pretty recently, actually. Um, Joe Pesci won the Oscar for Best Supporting Actor for playing this character. And, man, every single time, he's like the Joker in, 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 in Goodfellas. Every single time you're, you're scared of him, you're scared of what he's going to do, and yet you can't take your eyes off of him. And he's funny, too. He's so memorable. Every single scene you, you look forward to but are scared of at the same time. I don't want to turn around. I don't want to turn around. Ah, 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 don't say it. Ah, 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 don't say it. I'm the Oklahoma kid. Dance, dance, dance the drink back here. Joe Pesci's signature scene in the movie, of course, is the one that takes place early on. He and Henry and a bunch of the other guys are sitting around having drinks at the restaurant, and he's telling the story, and everyone laughs, and it's hilarious, and uh, then Henry says that he's funny, and Joe Pesci starts scowling at him and going, what do you mean I'm funny, huh? What do you mean by that? What do you mean that I'm funny? And everyone kind of shuts him and goes, uh-oh, Henry, that was the wrong thing to say. <laughs> because everyone knows what a hair trigger temper Tommy has. Of course, Tommy's just messing around with Henry, but the funny thing is, at the very beginning of the scene, his very first line is, what's really funny is, and nobody seems to remember that, of course, they're all too scared because he's sitting there going, I'm funny how? How? Oh, what do you mean by that, huh? You're the one who said it. Oh, Anthony, he knows what he said. He's a big boy. Come on, Henry, what do you mean by that? What do you mean when you say that I'm funny? How am I funny? Robert De Niro's in this movie, of course. He plays uh, Jimmy Conway, um, someone basically who kind of mentors Henry. And Tommy, as it turns out, um, throughout their uh, young lives as uh, hustlers and then uh, partners up with them on a lot of their scams and schemes uh, as they uh, get to be adult uh, gangsters. Um, it's not one of De Niro's more heralded performances. Whenever you know people talk about the great Robert De Niro performances, they don't really talk about Goodfellas all that much. But he's terrific in the movie, especially in the later sections when he starts to go, you know, a little not exactly bonkers. He just gets more paranoid, and uh, he just, uh, you know, it will put up with less uh, uh, wiggle room, I guess you could say, when it comes to pulling jobs. Uh, he ends up icing a whole bunch of his. Uh, uh, a bunch of the guys who pulled a big heist with him. Uh, so it's a good thing that uh, Henry wasn't in on that heist because he would have been dead now too. I mentioned earlier that uh, there's less of an emphasis on you know fancy camera moves than there is uh, fancy editing. But uh, of course there are a number of memorable shots, in particular the uh, Copacabana restaurant sequence, which is Henry and Karen walking across the street from their car, downstairs, past the uh, line of people waiting to get in, down the underground passageway, into the kitchen, out of the kitchen, and into the restaurant area where they're seated right away. Um, now, the funny thing is, if you watch this shot carefully, you'll notice that Henry and Karen and the cameraman <laughs> exit the kitchen the exact same door that they entered in through. They just made a big loop and went on through. They made it look like, they tried to make it look like that they passed through the kitchen in order to get to the dining room, but in fact, they made a detour they didn't need to make at all. Totally unnecessary. I tried to get the gun to dangle from the tripod, but it just wouldn't stay put. But you get the idea if you've seen the scene. Here's Henry waking up in bed. Nice, restful sleep he's had, and he opens his eyes to find his wife sticking a gun in his face. Wake up, Henry, she says. He is in deep doo-doo. <laughs> and the cool part is, is that this scene comes immediately after a really high-tension scene where Lorraine Bracco, his wife, is banging on the buzzer outside his girlfriend's apartment, yelling to the phone, yelling to anyone who will listen, he's my husband, get your own bleeping man, and then suddenly to this, wake up, Henry. You know, uh, people have uh, cited things like uh, Shakespeare in Love winning Best Picture over Saving Private Ryan, or recently The King's Speech winning Best Picture over The uh, Social Network as a good example of uh, the Best Picture not always winning Best Picture. I don't think there's a more clear-cut uh, uh, case of this than uh, when Goodfellas was beaten in Best Picture by Dances with Wolves, which was this Western directed by Kevin Costner. Um, I bet a lot of members of the Academy probably regret doing that by now because there is, you know, I mean, I saw Dances with Wolves in the theater uh, when, it was, when it was out. 
playing at the same time as Goodfellas. And I'm just like, man, I just don't understand why people like this movie so much. It's okay, you know, it's fine, but, you know, next to Goodfellas, it just pales in comparison, you know. It's, uh, Goodfellas is just so much more exciting, so much more alive than Dances with Wolves. Um, and uh, just so much more innovative, of course. What are you going to do? Except, of course, not take the Academy as seriously as the Academy wants you to. <sighs> what? I just saw it a little while ago. Do I have to open it already? Sorry. When I think about what my favorite movie of all time is, it's a close call between Back to the Future by Robert Zemeckis, Miller's Crossing by the Coen Brothers, and Goodfellas. And like I said, I gotta give Goodfellas the edge, not just because it's based on true story, but because the true story, you're immersed in this true story. You're totally immersed in this culture, in this lifestyle of these guys that aren't in the upper echelons of Godfather type organized crime, but the uh, down in the street guys that uh, were operating this way back in the 70s and 80s. Not to mention the fact that the movie is incredibly funny and exciting and scary and dramatic and educational and a good character study. I tell you, man, just talking about this movie is a joy for me. And I've loved talking about it for this series. And now it's all over. Oh wait, it isn't over. We still have two more Scorsese movies left to go. I hope you'll tune in for them and be sure and check out V's review of Goodfellas. Take it easy. No, for real this time. Hey, you know how uh, the borders are closing a whole bunch of stores and all the merchandise and the stores that are closing are like 60% like off right now? And... Oh, I love these movies so much. Mm -hmm.